Thanks a lot. You're welcome, Athena. Thank you. Just think, I think Pam is having some troubles getting on or connecting because I've seen her pop in and out. Um, we will at least start all of the um, verbal stuff as Pam works on it. Um, and then we wait for Shalini, but we'll start getting started. Um, Kelly, are you ready? Yes, I absolutely am. Excellent, thank you. Okay, seeing a presence of a quorum, I am calling this June 22nd, 2023 regular meeting of the Community Resources Committee of the Town Council to order at 4.33 p.m. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended by Chapters 22 and 107 of the Acts of 22 and extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time by a technological means. This meeting is being recorded. Um, at this time, I'm going to take a roll call, roll call attendance to make sure everyone can hear and be heard. Um, Shalini is missing right now. We'll catch her when she comes in. Uh, Pat. Present. Uh, Mandy is present. Pam. Present. And Jennifer. Present. So we have four or five members here, and so we have a quorum. Before we move on to the public hearing, um, I just want to let John know, thank you for being here, John. We have a public hearing first, so we're not going to get to residential rental bylaw. My guess is for at least an hour, if you want to just kind of hang out and turn off your video, I don't know whether it'll be even longer. Um, so I just thought I'd let you know it'll be a little bit. Um, with that, um, I think we are passing it off to Pam Rooney to uh, preside over the public hearing and if it closes the next action item. Okay, the time is 4.35. In accordance with provisions of MGL Chapter 40A, this public hearing of the Community Resources Committee of the Amherst Town Council has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and is being held for the purpose of providing the opportunity for interested residents to be heard regarding the following proposed amendments to the zoning bylaw. Zoning bylaw, Article 3, Use Regulations, Article 4, Development Methods, Article 9, Non-Conforming Lots, Uses and Structures, and Article 12, Definitions. To see if the town will vote to amend Article 3 use regulations to change the permitting requirements for owner occupied duplexes, affordable duplexes, non owner occupied duplexes, converted dwellings, townhouses to create more streamlined permitting pathways for these uses, to remove the use category subdividable dwellings, to add a use category three family detached dwelling triplex, to add a permitting pathway and standards and conditions for triplexes to modify standards and conditions for other housing use categories to amend permitting requirements for housing use categories in the aquifer recharge protection overlay district, to amend Article 4 development methods to add three family dwellings where appropriate, to amend Article 9 non-conforming lots uses and structures to add a reference to three family dwelling, to amend Article 12 definitions to add three family detached dwelling unit triplex and to delete subdividable dwelling. So the order of the order of business, and I want to check to see if there are folks out there in the audience. There are three attendees. And um, so I think any disclosures from the board or committees, committee members, none. Um, so yeah, We'll go to the sponsors' presentations, and the sponsors have had many opportunities to present this, um, but it changes every time. So if the sponsors want to, once again, um, describe what's happening or changes that have been made since the last time we discussed this, um, why don't you go ahead and do that now? Go ahead, Mandy. Okay, I'm going to share my screen so that 
it's easier to see. So everyone should be able to see. Um, we put in this draft the highlights in yellow. Um, the first one is this entire section that's in pink that has the comment. I think Pam, you had discussed why it was necessary in the in the section the last meeting, and so we're we're saying we're okay with deleting everything that's in pink um, if the planning department um, thinks it okay. You know, if if it really is duplicative. We're, we're fine with streamlining the, the zoning bylaw. So we haven't formally proposed, deleted it from here, but, but we wanted to put that out there. The change in yellow from board to authority is um, just, a, a, again, we missed one as we were changing it through based on um, Rob Mora and Chris Brestrup's um, usage of language. So it's just fixing one of those. Um, the bigger changes here are in owner-occupied duplexes. Um, in response to concern from both this committee and the planning board, we have returned or proposed um, special permits for the Aquifer Recharge Protection District. Uh, we had previously had site plan review there, um, so we've we've moved it back to special permit in response to concerns about um, the Aquifer Recharge Protection District. Um, and the the concerns were that a site plan review is not discretionary. Um, and so we've put it onto a discretionary where the board, the permit granting authority can can make a determination whether in that particular site in the ARP, a owner occupied duplex would be uh, appropriate. Um, in the yellow, in the conditions, uh, we have since, uh, again, in response to the planning board's concerns um, and some of the concerns I think Jennifer and Pam had indicated, we have adopted the language that Chris Brestrup proposed in her memo from about a month and a half ago um, regarding any buildings above two dwelling units on any parcel for owner-occupied duplexes being requiring a, um, a site plan review for only um, the first, the two, three or four dwelling units on a property and a special permit for above four dwelling units on a property in the RG, RVC and RN. This is the actual language that uh, Chris Brestrup proposed in that memo. Um, the other change is to affordable duplex. Um, it's in yellow here, but it would not show up in any proposed motion because we are proposing again um, in the ARP to go back to special permit. That's what it is right now in affordable duplexes. So this is actually a return to not proposing a change at all. Um, but it's in yellow to see that it changed from the last version. But it's basically going back to what we have now in the bylaw. Um, you'll see in triplex, again, there was concern about the ARP. And so we are proposing a no buildings of triplexes, no building of triplexes in the ARP and the RN. We had proposed a special permit there. And so we've added a no there for the ARP. And same with the townhouses, we had proposed a special permit in the ARP for the RN. And we are um, moving to no, which is actually um, no change from now because right now the current bylaw doesn't allow townplex townhouses at all in the RN district and we're proposing a special permit in the RN district and so the only change then in the RN district if this uh, amendment was adopted would be in the non ARP sections of the RN district. Um, I think the last thing is down here. Um, in response to um, notes that we received from Janet McGowan regarding converted dwelling, it came to our attention that our original proposal didn't require a change in the definition of converted dwelling, but after we had worked through some of the concerns and reworked the converted dwelling proposal to um, streamline it and bring it back to what a converted dwelling really is, looking at, we forgot to look at the definition there, um, and looking back at the definition, we realized that some of that definition might actually conflict with the new proposal that came from Rob Mora on fixing sort of the converted dwelling conditions. And so we have added a change in the definition to ensure that it does not, um, again, more of a streamline um, and does not conflict with the conditions that are in there to create this weird sort of which one applies. Um, and, and then some changes there. I can talk a little bit more about that if people have more questions. 
Um, but but that is a new change, but it's more of a, as we went through and made many more changes to the conditions than what Pat and I had preliminarily proposed to the council, to the converted dwellings, the, the staff and us had not gone back to look at the definition to see that that also didn't need changed. And so we happened to realize that this week and and made some proposed changes to it. So that's that's the only changes from the last draft that we talked about. Would you like me to stop sharing? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. That was hard to read anyway. Um, I'm gonna mix this up a little bit. And I think rather than going to questions from us first, I would love to hear from staff um, before we proceed. Christine, I see Dave. Would you like me to give a report on the planning board meeting last night? Would love to. I would love to hear that. Okay. Um, so um, the planning board met last night. I think this was the fifth or sixth time they've reviewed this zoning amendment. Um, and Pat reviewed the changes that had been made since the last draft that the planning board had reviewed. Um, and Bruce Coldham, um, stated that he had not been convinced that the proposal would achieve its stated goals. Um, and he moved to uh, recommend that the planning board recommend to town council that the proposal not be adopted. And Tom Long um, seconded that motion. And then Bruce read a prepared statement. Um, he said that the planning board had spent a lot of time considering the proposal. Um, and that the stated goals were loud, laudable, but the proposed solution um, was not likely to achieve the goals. Um, he thought it was inconsistent with the stated goals and objectives. And uh, he said that he had begun a process um, a few months ago to seek out other towns that are like Amherst and to find out how they are coping with similar housing issues. And so far, he's spoken with four or five towns, and he's uh, gathering information. And they all have different um, cures that they're pursuing. Um, Bruce also stated that he had attended the ITGA webinar that was held last week, and he'd found it illuminating. Um, he thanked Mandy and Pat for their efforts, but stated that there are other better ways to address the issues and to achieve the stated goals. He acknowledged that this is an important problem, but that the proposed zoning amendment is not the way to deal with it. Um, there was a long discussion after Bruce's statement and planning board members thanked and commended uh, Pat and Mandy for their efforts. Um, and the planning board members talked about parts of the proposal that the town uh, should consider pursuing. Um, Doug Marshall offered a friendly amendment to commit the planning board to follow up and pursue aspects of the proposed amendment uh, within the next two years. In the end, the board made two motions. And the first motion um, that was voted on was that the board voted to commit itself to meet at least three times in person to before the end of 2023 to develop and discuss possible solutions to the housing issues uh, affecting low and medium income residents and students. And that was a seven to zero vote. And then the second vote was to that the board recommended to town council that they not adopt the proposed zoning amendment. And that was also uh, a seven to zero vote. There was no public comment offered at the meeting. So um, so that's my report on the planning board meeting. It did Chris, last I week. thought there were two abstentions. No. Okay, sorry, I had that written that way. Because Tom and um, Andrew abstained. Oh, Tom and Andrew abstained from the first vote. You're right. Yeah. But the, but for the second vote, Thank so you. Tom and Andrew, in, in effect, abstained from the vote that committed the planning board members to meet in the future because Tom and Andrew will not be members of the planning board. So thank you, Pat, for um, reminding me of, of that. But Tom and Andrew, they all voted seven to zero okay. to recommend uh, that the town council not adopt the proposed zoning amendment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Was there any additional staff 
um, commentary that you wanted to add at this time? Uh, I don't think so. I, I'd be willing to answer questions, but I, I have no commentary to add. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Since I wasn't able to attend that meeting. Um, okay, uh, board. Any any comments? Uh, actually, we have we have four people in the audience now, and again, I think I'm going to go to public comment before we jump into our deliberation. Anyone in the public who would love to speak about this this topic only? Um, please raise your hand and we'll we'll bring you into the meeting. There's also going to be um, a later public hearing a public comment period on other topics, um, but this is strictly for this hearing. Any public comments? I see a hand up. It is Janet Keller. Can someone bring her in, please? Janet, name and name and address, please. Sure, Janet Keller, one twenty Pulpit Hill Road, in Amherst. Um, I've uh, attended every single one of the meetings about this topic that I could. And I've done some research on it. And um, I want to um, commend uh, uh, the authors for their uh, detailed work. And I want to also um, commend the planning board for the difficult decision they made last night and the care and diplomacy with which they made it um, and the research that Bruce is doing on what will actually work to bring more affordable housing, which we all want to have um, in our town. Um, so um, I hope that the CRC will um, support the work of the planning department and the planning board in this regard um, to achieve their very desirable goal of uh, getting more affordable housing every day that, that we um, do not find real solutions to that. And I have done research that convinces me that um, the, the solution is going to lie primarily outside the zoning um, zoning uh, bylaw, um, with the exception of possibly upgrading the inclusionary zoning portion. So thank you for this opportunity to comment. Thank you, Janet. Uh, anyone else in the audience who would like to speak, please feel free to raise your hand. I'm not seeing folks raise hands, so I'm going to close that portion and move back to um, the RC member comment. Oh, Chris, Chris has her hand up. I believe Hilda Greenbaum um, raised yeah. her hand just as you were. Yeah, thank you. Um, Hilda Greenbaum, please enter and give us your name and address. I just wanted to say that after last night's meeting and everything that's been said over seven months, there's nothing else left to say is to just recommend that they just stop discussing this issue when we look at the other ways to solve the problem. There's nothing left to say, except it's, it's not going to work. Thank you. 
Thank you, Hilda. I think that that was that was the message. Thank you. Um, anyone else in the audience then? And thank you, Chris, for keeping your eye out. <laughs> I, I had switched my my view to the side. Um, let's then let's proceed back to counselor comment then. And we're missing Shalini, right? She's she's absent. She is, and I, I have not heard from her, and I did text her right before we started to see if she was coming, so I, I don't know what her plans are because I have not, I did not receive an email ahead of time, and I have not received a response to the text, so. Okay, okay, just one um, check. <laughs> any, any comments from any of you folks? Andy. Um, I, I guess, actually, no, not right now, I am, because we tend to s d do our deliberation after we close the hearing. So sorry, never mind. Jennifer? You're looking pensive. Uh, yeah, no, I was just going to ask, would we close? I mean, we don't close the hearing. We continue the I guess I was just confused by that because we're continuing, we have been continuing the hearing to a date certain. So for us to deliberate, we wouldn't necessarily, I mean, we haven't been closing the hearing. Right, we've been speaking about it each time without necessarily closing the hearing. Right. So I guess I was just a little confused by what Mandy's feeling. Yeah. So in past practice, the hearing at CRC has focused only on questions. And once the hearing is closed, then the CRC members deliberate on whether to recommend or not. Um, but the hearing has focused on questions and any needs to modify proposals before closing the hearing, which is slightly different than how the planning board does it. Um, so you'll see on our agenda that the action item actually has committee discussion and vote and recommendation outside of the hearing. And so I, I had thought about commenting on my thoughts on recommendations, but I felt like that's not part of the hearing. That's after the hearing. So that's why I said that. Jennifer. This is all procedural, but um, how are we going to make the decision to close the hearing? And I mean, how do we do close the hearing if we don't know if we're going to make a motion, I mean, to, if we close the hearing, then it's closed for good. We have to repost it to open it again, correct? So the hearing is to hear from the public and to answer questions per our rules on what you do at a hearing. There's a whole list, as Pam knows, disclosures, proposal, presentation, council member questions, questions from the public, comments from the public, member questions, and then you close the hearing. And then the committee debates on whether to recommend or not recommend after the hearing is closed. So if you've gotten all of your questions answered, then it's time to close the hearing. Chris, Chris Brestrup, and then we'll come back to Jennifer if you still have. I just wanted to note, I think I emailed some of you earlier. I need to depart at about five after five and I oh. will return at 525. I have to meet the planning board chair out here to get his signature before he goes on vacation. So if you had questions for me in the next five or 10 minutes, I could answer them. Otherwise I'm gonna be elsewhere for about 20 minutes. Does anyone have questions for planning staff? Jennifer. Um, well, I guess, Chris, I, you know, I can't recall if you answered it last night, but do you have any comments about um, the sponsors proposed changes that were presented today? I, I I am in agreement with the proposed changes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I would be amenable to closing the public hearing. We have talked about it for quite some time. Um, it doesn't sound like there are necessarily any questions remaining, it may be more commentary. And um, so I think, um, does anyone want to make a motion to close the public hearing? Mandy. I'll, I'll move to close the public hearing. I'll second. Okay. 
second by Jennifer. Okay, so now commentary. No, we have to vote. Oh, to close. you have to vote to close it. Yes, you're right. Um, Pat. Aye. Mandy Joe. Aye. Jennifer. Aye. Pam is an aye. Okay, so the the public hearing has been closed on whatever it is, June twenty second. Commentary. So we're moving on to action item three A, right? We are moving on to action item. Uh, well, agenda item three A. Yes. Exactly. Zoning bylaw, Article 3, Article 4, Article 9, Article 12, duplex, triplex, home, actually townhouse, and converted dwelling. So we have committee discussion. Jennifer. So we could also, um, I mean, the planning board last night, they had two votes. They were, and they were very clear. They were connected that if they were voting not to recommend the, the package as it currently is, that they would work with the planning department to craft recommendations. So we could um, agree, we could vote to do the same thing. I mean, to vote that we would, um, so how would we, we'd be voting to recommend to the council. So it would be that we would like, what we are asking is that the planning board work with the planning department to craft a, a proposal or set of recommendations that we feel will be able to uh, generate more housing for low and middle income residents. Um, I think our good. current zoning has done a very good job of supporting housing for students. That's the, the issue is that we haven't really built housing for anybody else. Okay, so that would be a that would be um, if I were to paraphrase that that would be uh, a motion to well, I think we would have to vote to not support this proposal and with a, some and that we ask the planning director the planning board to work with the planning staff to in fact address the housing needs and and any um, opportunities within the bylaws to make that happen. Yeah, I may be cutting too quickly. We may want to discuss it, but I, you know, that's what I'm thinking. As, in, as in what would be the method for doing so? Well, I don't know if there's counselors want to just members want to, you know, discuss, but that for me, instead of continuing to discuss each item, and I saw that in the packet, there was also like 10 motions if we wanted to adopt different parts of the proposal. And that's what um, I'm, I'm not comfortable with because I don't, you know, the piecemeal, I'm just not sure how they're all going to fit together. I get very concerned about unintended consequence if we look at that motion sheet and start approving some, some or all of it. So I would personally feel more better, more comfortable having the planning board and the planning department, you know, looking at the whole package, not the whole package, but the whole, just looking at what is, how, how are we going to achieve more housing, <laughs> um, you know, for the, you know, for so the, the, approach, down. the approach that they suggested that they do, they meet. Yeah, yeah. because so, because that's another question. We have those, that's in the packet. There's uh, like, I think there's 10 motions and mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't know. I, I, so we could go through those, but I'm, I would not feel comfortable deciding, you know, voting in, you know, for each one kind of in isolation and, and piecemeal without really knowing, um, you know, if we support one without the other, what the impacts are gonna be. Uh, Mandy, and then I and then I wanna weigh in. 
Andy's muted. Sorry, um, a couple things that that what the motions that are in the packet were something that I drafted because the planning board um, at their prior hearings were wondering whether they could vote things piecemeal and what that would look like and should they vote things piecemeal and and all of that. So I I thought that it would be helpful for them to see what a piecemeal sort of vote would be based on not their hearing from last night, but but the month before. Um, so I drafted something of like here's how I could envision a potential piecemeal vote going obviously some of them were really piecemeal and others not as piecemeal and you could combine some and and not combine some right there's there's all sorts of ways to do it but I, I thought I'd put that out there as to why that was there um, as just a potential help if a committee wanted to vote something piecemeal instead of all at once and the planning board certainly was discussing that a month ago um my thoughts um obviously I'm a sponsor I just asked something was that in the planning board packet it should have been. Uh, well, oh, okay. I don't know I whether know. Chris okay. put it in. I think it was. Um, I, I We sent it to Chris <laughs> so, and told her to do what, what she wanted with it. <laughs> um, obviously, I'm a sponsor, so I want to see this pass um, and I want to see it recommended. One thing that struck me, though, at the planning board was, I I, I guess where I am is, there was nothing really bad to say about the current proposal. There weren't necessarily anything in particular that I've heard from the planning board that Pat and I haven't addressed that says, this is why we can't support it. Other than a vague, it's complex, or a vague, it's not how we would do it, or a vague, there's other ways, right? Um, and that, I will say, frustrates me um, because Zoning, I look at zoning, I look at legislation, I look at our housing crisis in particular and say, we can't wait for the perfect. We can't wait for the exact thing one person would do over something else. Um, I think Pat and I have been very open in saying this isn't the only possible solution. This is not the only thing and that it will solve all problems, but it's something to move us forward. Um, and even many of the planning board members have said there are parts of it, part of their vote was that there are parts of it we like, yet they didn't want to go on record saying, here's what we can support. And that frustrates me because if there are parts we like that work, and from what I've heard from Chris Brestrup and the department and all of the work we've done, they are okay with this proposal. They don't think it's awful. They don't think it's against the master plan. They think they, they might think it might not do what we hope it would do, but it might. Um, and so they're not against the proposal. And we've got, and some of the proposal actually came from them, right? <laughs> Pat and I would have never proposed to delete subdividable dwellings if not Rob Moore saying, hey, delete subdividable dwellings. <laughs> um, so some of this directly came from them. And if I'm looking at our housing crisis and looking at what the planning board motion was and what Jennifer, you just proposed, which I don't necessarily oppose in terms of look at more things to do, right? Yes, we need to look at more things to do. We need to figure out how to do this. We need to find ways to build more housing for low and moderate income, exactly what you said, Jennifer, right? But do we wait two years? Do we wait three years? Do we wait a year and a half while doing nothing? Or do we do this that is proposed or parts of this that are proposed, whether it be only the townhouse part, which is actually quite small, only the converted dwelling, only the duplex, only the triplex, although I'm not sure the triplex would do much at all. Um, I will admit that that was more of create a category um, because people have said we want a category so that in the future we might be able to craft that one better than apartments in general, right? Um, do we do that now and continue working towards other things and say, you know, this might help and it's worth doing something that might help instead of doing nothing while we wait six months to determine what we might be able to do another year to craft the bylaw that would do what we might think about doing, because I can tell you it'll take about a year <laughs> to craft the bylaw once you decide what you want to do. Um, and then another six months for hearing, and we're looking at two years. It, Jennifer, I think you even said 18 months, two years, either that or Pam, right? One of you guys just said up to two years. 
while we sit here, while we, we have two years at the planning board before we get any proposals, while we sit here still wringing our hands about the housing crisis? Or do we try to do something now while continuing to always do something more? And so my position on legislation has always been keep moving forward. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be exactly what you want or exactly what you think it might do. But if you're moving forward, do it. And so I would vote to recommend we, as a council, adopt, whether piecemeal or not, adopt the proposal. And yet I would also vote to recommend that the planning board continue planning and the planning department plan. So I wouldn't I, I wouldn't say no while we plan. I would say yes and plan. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm sorry. Okay, there are things that when you say we don't, if we do nothing, I mean, there are things in the proposal that could actually send us in the wrong direction. That could, so I, I'll just say if, um, do, if footnote M doesn't apply to triplexes, that will that will have an impact, and it will have a really um, adverse impact for the neighborhoods in which that happens. So you know uh, that's you know it, all progress, all change isn't the change that we want. So that concerns me. The attitude of it's better to do something than nothing because we could there could be adverse um, impacts of what we do. Uh, so that's you know, that's my concern. I mean, there's, so that's one thing. I, I could not vote for this um, because I feel like now, you know, that, so it's it's definitely now that there cannot be triplexes or townhouses in the RN neighborhoods that, you know, that's probably something that would be very, residents that live there would be very receptive to, and that more is by special permit in those areas, but there's some zoning districts in which there, there will, the way it is now, that, that would not, it just wouldn't really be acceptable. Um, you know, and there continues to be the concern about, you know, owner-occupied dwellings, although I guess, so are those no longer by right? And that's a question I have since it was just changed. So under the proposal, owner-occupied, duplexes, the first two units built on any parcel would be a yes. So building commission or building permit only. So there's a concern next, about if well, those... Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> and that's anywhere in the residential. The first two units. In the RO and RLD, once you're above two units, it would be a special permit immediately for three and above units in the RO and RLD on one parcel. In the RN, RG, and RVC, Units three and four on a parcel would be site plan review, and units five and above would be special permit, which is actually, for owner-occupied duplexes, more strict than the current bylaw. So in the RN now, you can have, can you multiple owner-occupied duplexes? No. Yes. Yes. You can't have the non-owner occupied. No, you can have non-owner occupied. They're all special permits in the RN right now. Only affordables are site plan review in the RN. But right now, any number of duplexes on a property can be built under special permit. And so what our proposal is for those permitting requirements in the RN is to change that special permit for three and four units. So one for two buildings to site plan review. And for the first building, to a yes. But there is concern that if, well, I think that's a concern. I think that's a concern. People want a special permit for even the first unit because it might not always stay owner occupied and that that could have. So I, I think there are, you know, def residents who would say that they're not comfortable. You know, that's a change that they're not objecting to the duplexes, but they would like it to be not by right. So I'm saying there's 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 substantive parts of the by of the proposal as it is now that people don't think 
doing that is better than doing nothing. I'm going to go to Pat and then I forgot to weigh in. <laughs> you never forget. <laughs> um, <laughs> first of all, there we if you read the proposal and it surprises me that you there's still confusion about it on the planning board and here because we have been looking at it for so long. But we're proposing deed restriction on owner-occupied duplexes, not just affordable ones. No, you had a turn, my turn. Um, so, I, I, and you, people keep talking about adverse impacts. Uh, adverse impacts to doing nothing, adverse impacts to some of the decisions, and I don't know what they are, that the planning board might make. So will you vote against planning board or planning department decisions that will carry adverse consequences or not? We just, you know, but the reason that I want to break this up into sections is because I think that there are aspects of this that we can support or I can support. I really can only speak for myself. But our job as a community resource committee is to take responsibility for our own decisions, which means if you don't like one of the suggestions during the breakdown of the, then you vote no. If you like it, you vote yes. But that's, you can't decide, or I think it's irresponsible to decide to hand your responsibility as a community resource member to the planning board and the planning department. We're here to make a decision. I would love it if you made the decision I want. You're probably not going to. But what is the harm of looking at this in sections and discussing it and allowing our views to be heard and known? So don't step aside. I, I don't think your intention is to step aside from responsibility. I really don't. So, but that's what this would be. Oh, we're going to do what the planning board did. Yeah, so let's take some responsibility here. Okay, thank you, Pat. Um, I, I, thought very carefully about the breaking it down into parts. And I am I am not going to be able to do that. I think I am still uncomfortable with a couple of the aspects of um first of all it was it was really I, I I'm I think I think we we haven't finished our business here. And there, I think there are some aspects of development in the RN which really need more attention and they haven't gotten it. Um, I think that there are RN areas that front on fairly, fairly busy streets that are on major bus routes that need some additional consideration for what might be allowed there rather than say no to something maybe maybe a special permit would allow something in the rn that we're not thinking about the r the rn again is a blanket with um lots and lots of different characteristics unlike the rg which is pretty consistently dense neighborhoods um i'm still uncomfortable with the triplex, if we create the triplex, we also need to address triplex in, in combination with any other building type. So we already know that in the RG, we have, we have single families, we have duplexes, we already have three families, we have four families. And given, given interpretation of zoning these days, we understand that compatible use designation will allow or determination would, would allow a triplex to be added to some other combination of things. And so I am uncomfortable with the cutoff 
between where uh, something is site site plan review versus site special permit that the number should be lower. I think that the, for instance, the number of units on a site um, should cut off at three. Anything anything over three automatically requires a site a special permit, and we haven't addressed that. So it's a it's a it's a consequence of changing one item, creating an item, and yet not addressing it throughout the the bylaw. If we do anything to, if we create a triplex, we need to add triplex to footnote M. And again, if it's everything that we're doing is in combination with um, other uses on the site, and therefore, um, I actually started sketching out the, the various com combinations and permutations of um, unit unit counts and where a cutoff could occur or should occur. So I have a really hard time breaking this into pieces and saying, this piece feels pretty good. This piece doesn't. Um, I, I, I actually appreciate the conversations that the planning board has had, and they've been many, that I, I mean, again, I, I don't think we've, we haven't addressed the gamut. Um, and so I, I would like to, I would like to not break it down into, into parts and pieces. And I'm not abrogating my responsibility. I think it's not, it's not there yet. Jennifer. Um, yeah, I mean, what I, I mean, if we if we want to take if the CRC wants to take this on um, it, with in combination with the planning board or, or it, on our own, I mean, my concern with the package of proposed zoning revisions is that nothing in them incentivizes or requires anyone to build more housing or create, you know, turn their house into a duplex. Um, and rent or sell those new units at below market rate. So we know uh, you can laugh. That's market rate is very high. And and I'm and, just yeah. laughing at zoning doesn't affect selling prices of houses. That's not what it's about. So it doesn't. Right. So matter this what. is not. There are okay. things. I just want to say that that's what I'm laughing at. I'm not laughing. No, at there you. is zoning. There are some college towns. This is just one. You've heard me say this before. It's part of their zoning that they have minimal distance requirements. So, yeah, but that's not that is not dealing with the cost of things, the prices that people charge, and it it's is, not rent control. And it's yeah, but it is if you if you have a, a house here and you rent it to students, there's a house next door and the third house. You you would not in those towns if the houses are within 500 feet of each other be able to rent every house to a student. So if you wanted to rent the middle house, you would have to rent it at a price that maybe a non-student household could afford. I'm not saying that that's what we're going to do, but that's part of zoning. But that, so I, that is why when people say they think that this set of proposals is going to, the end result will be more housing rented to the student market in you know, more neighborhoods in town. I have, there are a lot of students live where I live. So that's, I'm, but I think that's been part of the concern for people who are now not living where that's a reality all around them. So that I just don't, I would like to see, and if, so if we, if we are not going to incentivize or have requirements or somehow build in, and maybe it's impossible, maybe it is housing that is, then I don't see what these, then we are just making it easier for if developers and investors to build more units to rent at the highest rate the market will bear to students. Um, personally, I think that duplexes, owner occupied or non owner occupied, the first unit should be by site plan review. I just don't, I don't think a site plan review having to do, having to notify of others is onerous. So, you know, that's you know, what I would like, that's what I would support. 
So, you know, that's one part of it. The most basic part that I'm not comfortable with is um, the first two duplexes by right. I think that, you know, I would support a butter notification. And again, I don't, I don't think our permitting process is onerous. So that's just, so I'm not um, abrogating my responsibility. There's just actual parts of the proposal that I don't support. Mandy. So much. Um, to Pam's point about the development in the RN needs more attention because it's such a big district with a lot of different characteristics. That's what a special permit permit is for, to allow that discretion for a board to say a townhouse is okay in this part of the RN, but it's not okay in that part. That is the point of a special permit to say in this district, there are parts of the district that that type of building is appropriate and there are parts that it is not. And so for a townhouse, which our proposal does go to a special permit, not a site plan review anymore, that's exactly what our ZBA would be doing. And if they said, and if a person came in with a townhouse development in a part that the ZBA said, you know, that's not appropriate at all. It's in the back of a development, not near anything on wetlands or practically near wetlands. The ZBA has the discretion to say, no, we're not going to allow it there. But if it, that townhouse proposal is in an RN that's on a major road right next to a bus stop, the ZBA can say that's an exact spot we want that townhouse. That's why we put a special permit on these things instead of say no. That's exactly why we do it. And that's what a lot of our proposal does. To the concern that nothing incentivizes or requires someone to build or convert and then rent or sell at below market rate or market rate. Our state does not allow rent control. We can't force someone to sell below market rate if they don't want to, except in terms of renting below market rate or selling below market rate when they are designated state housing inventory affordable projects. And what does our duplex affordable duplex part of this proposal do? Require that they be on the state housing inventory for below market rate for those up to 80 or 50 or 30, whatever the developer wants. We as a town in zoning, zoning does not say you have to sell, you can't sell. You have to sell to someone who's gonna own or occupy it. You don't, except where we've actually said owner occupied duplexes with the deed restriction. Isn't that the type of building we want? And to talk about your minimal distance, You've had a year and a half on the council and you've been talking about minimal distance the whole time. I haven't seen a proposal yet. If you propose it, I will look at it just as closely as I looked at this one. But needing that minimal distance, they don't have to be tied. I don't know why you want them tied, but you can do one thing and then do another thing two months later or three months later. But what I'm hearing from you saying, well, if it's not going to do what I want it to do, we can't do it at all. Or if we're not going to tie them together, we can't do it. The only way to tie below market rate to zoning, like force below market rate housing sales or rents to zoning is through affordable duplexes in our bylaw or writing another one. Because you know what, a minimal distance thing, which we're not really here to talk about, does create winners and losers. The person who rents to the the person who rents to the the to go with what your example was, Jennifer, the person who rents to the students will get huge profits according to what you say. And the person next door that didn't happen to be the person renting to the students first and wants to sell suddenly has a value of a house a whole lot lower than someone else. And so when you've done that, you've just created housing values within a neighborhood that give winners and losers to housing price. Whether that's good or not, whether that's what we wanna do, I don't know, but that proposal is not in front of us. Someone write it, you write it. You've been talking about it for a year and a half. Write the proposal. You've been talking about state colleges. 
write the proposal, bring it to the council and let us debate it with language in front of us. But to say you won't even consider this one because it doesn't have that one attached to it, to me, is just not the way legislation works necessarily. So I don't, I don't get the, well, if we're not going to incentivize something and we don't actually know what that incentivization might look like or whether we could even do it, I won't even consider a proposal or I can't vote for the proposal because it doesn't do that, even though I don't know whether it's legal, that I look at the federal government when people vote for or against something like the debt ceiling and say, well, it wasn't my proposal, so I'm going to vote no. And it just frustrates me at the federal level. It frustrates me here too. Thank you, Mandy. Jennifer, you got your hand up. Yes. So I never, ever said I wasn't going to vote for it because it didn't have minimal distance. I was responding to what a counselor said that you can't, zoning cannot deal with renting it below the top of the market. And I was saying that is an example of a zoning. That's part of the zoning in the towns that have it. Um, so that's all I was saying. I had no never talked about it having, we have to do this or I'm not going to vote for that. There are, um, and yes, you have said, you know, affordable duplexes will be permitted by right. Our planning department said it is highly unlikely that we will see affordable duplexes, that people who have, you know, the money, they're, they're, they either are going to buy or they own a house and they're going to go to the expense. There may be a couple of, of people that will you know, but they, our planning department said that's very unlikely. So we can be aspirational, but if we're being realistic, the chances that we are going to see um, a lot of, um, of duplexes, owner-occupied duplexes that are then rented out at a rate that the you know government would recognize as affordable housing is is slim to nil. That's just, and that, you know, that's the reality. So. Um, and I don't think that we need to change. And I've said this before, and I know you totally disagree with me, but I don't think we need to change our zoning bylaws to incentivize more housing, market rate housing, which in this town is for students. We, we have been building hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of units with multiple bedrooms for the last seven to eight years with the zoning and the permitting process that we have. And I believe that if you want to have more, you know, I, I think it's great to have more owner occupied and more duplexes, but I think that they should, you know, there should be a butter notification. That's just what I think. And it should not be for right. And I think that in the RGs where we already can have nine units on an acre <clears throat> with multiple bedrooms, that's 36 students, because that's who they're rented to, that we don't need to, Pat, in your in the RN district, you just said that where you live, there's no longer gonna be townhouses or triplexes. Where I live, I think 36 students. I didn't say that. Well, that's what last night, I mean, that's what you said that there wouldn't be in the RN. There are not gonna be triplexes and duplex and townhouses. Did I understand that correctly? I mean, if I, if I did correct me, cause that's what I, heard that there'll be no triplex in the APR and RN and no townhouse and APR. APR. So are, are there going to continue to be townhouses so and triplexes right in the now, RN? Townhouses and, townhouses and triplexes right now, if we do not change zoning, do not allow triplexes or townhouses or apartments. Right. So no, I so I'm just asking for clarification. At the beginning of last night's planning board meeting, Pat expressed or she presented two changes that the sponsors had made since the last planning board meeting. So that was the first time I heard it. And, and, what well, they, and they refer to the aquifer recharge regions. Which is a so very that's the, small portion of the oh, Okay, right. well, that's not what it sounded like. That's, I didn't hear it that way and last it night. Got, right. And Doug made sure that was said. Okay, twice. so no, that's I appreciate that clarification because what I heard last night was in the whole RN. So that didn't that change didn't happen. No, that, that change would be no change to the current bylaw. The current bylaw does not allow apartments or townhouses in the RN at all. So if we stick with the current bylaw, you're not getting apartments. No, I know, but I heard that last night, I thought you were going back to that. That's Just how I in the it. ARP, 
just, just enough ARP. for recharge, and which the same is with, RN is very small. Okay, and the same with triplexes. So they can still be in the RN, just not in the ARP. Correct. Okay. Thank All you. under special permit. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Which is but, um, right now I, not allowed. You know, I still in the RG districts. We there it is in the current zoning. There is a great deal of densification there, so that is why I could only support the triplexes, which now are considered apartments and are, fall under footnote M. Since triplex are now their own category, I would need to see that as continuing as they are now to be under footnote M. So this raises a good a good point, and that is that if additional modifications were to be made um, to specifically that that item, and I I would share that concern that that we would we would need to adjust wording for footnote M in order to create the triplex category and we would need to modify um, the, we would need to modify the, um, I'm trying to think which section it is. Um, is it 3.3 point, 3 point, is it 3.3213? Um, that's the, that's the triplex section. Um, where did I make my note? Uh, and and part of this, frankly, is that is that it changes each time. And for somebody who doesn't look at her computer every single day, because this is really only a part time job, not a full time job, um, I I dislike seeing the surprises. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm trying to think what I where I was going with that. Oh, I know what it was. It was it's actually in the in the prelude under 3.321, where the suggestion was made. Um, uh, excuse me, 3.3210, where in fact the suggestion was made by the planning staff that any development in the RG RV C and RN districts, any development with more than two, but not more than four dwelling units on a single parcel shall require site plan review. And any development with more than four dwelling units on a single parcel shall require a special permit. I would need to see that ratcheted down to with more than two, but not more than three would get um, site plan review and any development with more than three would go directly to special permit. And, and part of that is simply the fact that we have um, we have the the and ands that are occurring because of the interpretation of compatible uses, um, complementary uses, excuse me, that the ZBA um, recommends. And if if we can change footnote M, if we can if we can ratchet this down to anything more than three dwelling units goes to site goes to special permit, then I finally become more more comfortable with adding triplex to this array because triplex shows up in so many different combinations across town. That would be the only way that I could ever even support it. The one, the one thing I can support is I like the fact that we call an apartment and a townhouse dwelling as starting with the count of four units. And that makes sense. Yay, I'm supporting it. <laughs> Andy. So in order to support the change for townhouses and apartments to four, you have to create a triplex section. Um, I just said, if we create a triplex yeah, section. So, so to do that, the, those two go together, right? Because otherwise you don't have a three family at all in the bylaw. Um, 
Um, the footnote M could easily be modified if this committee wants that recommendation. What it would be is splitting these votes, right? And making some votes with recommendations that say to recommend the triplex going back to that motion of possible motions or whatever, right? Um, the one that talks about the triplexes type thing. Um, I think it's the one on top of page two would, would also say, you know, and modified by that, that thing I added to the end of everything and modified by, although it would be revision 12A now, but, um, and modified by, um, adding to footnote M of the dimensional table, a reference to section 3.321 three, I believe is what it is, triplexes, right? And, and that would be just the way footnote M is written, that's all you'd have to do is, is add that little one section into footnote M if that's a recommendation this committee would want, that one's easy. Um, in terms of your other thing about special permit, Pam, for owner-occupied duplexes. So here's the thing. I talk a lot, well, I think a lot about compromises and legislation where no one's happy, right? And they say this at the federal level, if no one's happy or at the state level, if no one's happy, it's a good compromise, right? <laughs> um, especially with legislation. So look at what is allowed for an owner-occupied duplex, the permitting pathway right now for an owner-occupied duplex in the RG. It is site plan review. You can put in the RG, those, uh, Chris put a thing up of, I don't know how many duplexes it was. It was like nine buildings on your sample thing, I think, right? Um, I'd have to go back to Chris's memo where she picked out a almost two acre plot of land and drew some duplexes and all. Right now, that could be done by site plan review if we don't change anything at all. And you know what? Hold on, Jennifer. You know what? I'm good with that. I'm trying to get to yes for some of it, but I'm totally good within the RG and RVC duplexes at site plan review, no matter how many are on a parcel. But in an attempt to reach a compromise, in trying to get that yes for the first one so that our, ex our currently exclusionary zoning policies treat that second unit on a property for a one building, new building duplex, exactly the same as now we treat ADUs and exactly the same as we treat single family homes. I'm willing to say when you get to that third building, we're gonna actually turn back the zoning. Hold on. Third building, or third building or third dwelling unit? Third building, the fifth dwelling unit. Right now, the third dwelling unit gets a site plan review. The fifth dwelling unit gets a site plan review. The 18th dwelling unit gets a site plan review under our current zoning in the RVC and RG for an owner-occupied duplex. And so for me to try and get that yes for the first and second dwelling unit, I'm willing to, and this goes against everything I think about for zoning, make the zoning stricter to give you that fifth and up as a special permit. I want it because of what things have talked. I'm not willing to do it for third and up because you know what? Compromise. I'd rather have the current zoning of site plan review for the RG and RVC and not get my yes than to make the third building a special permit, the third unit a special permit. I would rather keep the current zoning than do that. And what I'm asking this committee to do is compromise. Is the current zoning of site plan review for the 18th dwelling unit on that parcel in the RG, if they're all duplexes? I don't good think we have the parcels in the RG, but. but. Chris proposed one that had nearly 18 units on it. Um, for the it was 10th, partially in the RN too. At RN is also site, the RN is special permit right now, but the RVC and RG are that for the eighth, ninth, 10th, you name it. In the RG and RVC for that number, I'm good with a site plan review. If we, if you want a special permit for those higher ones, I'm asking you to keep the site plan review for the third and fourth building, which is what our current zoning is, and to change it to a yes for the first and second dwelling unit. That to me is what compromise looks like. Uh, 
Um, and actually what I said was was to the fourth building and up, fourth unit and up. You said the third unit and up. I I I meant the fourth. Because right now it's the fifth unit, the third building. It really needs to be the, the proposal. Fourth. Because you that's can the have... second building, though. So, Mandy, you know, Mandy, that's you know, what, the second building. What I said at the beginning was that you could have a four family, you could have a four unit building on a site, and you add one owner occupied duplex, you're now at six units on a site. And it needs to be a special permit if you hit the fourth build, the fourth dwelling unit on a site. I, Chris, Chris has her hand up. Um, are you recognizing me? Yes, I am. Okay, so I just wanted to point out that the sketch that I made that showed 16 units on a property is the result of two things that town meeting did. One was to accept owner-occupied duplexes by site plan review. So that's one thing the town meeting did. The other thing was actually something that the building commissioner did. The building commissioner now recognizes the ability to put more than one um, use category on a single parcel if those uses are considered to be um, complementary. So when you put those two things together, that allows um, up to 16 units on this particular parcel, but that was an unintended consequence. And what I wanted to do was correct that, what I consider is a problem. And so that's why I made that sketch to point out, this is possible now, wouldn't we like to change that? So yeah. Yeah. that's all I have to say, thank you. And, and excuse me, so just to finish that thought, so that was your, that's why you had a recommendation of having only one additional duplex before, before it went to special permit. And, and I was suggesting because it, the, the same concept also applies to a triplex being added to a single family. You quickly, you know, a triplex on a site um, is well, it's a, it's three additional units, and that that should also trigger trigger um, special permit. So and, it does because any triplex under our proposal is a special permit, except now with a triplex, if you counted it as an apartment building in the RVC, it would be a site plan review because apartments in the RVC are site plan review. But if you have a single family home under our proposal and you want to put a triplex on that same parcel. The triplex is a special permit. So it's already there. Under our proposal, if you have a single family home and you want to put one duplex on, you'd need a site plan review because that would be the third, that would be the second and third dwelling unit. And the way this is written, it's not building. We talked to Chris about that. It's dwelling units. So the third dwelling unit is a site plan review. The fourth dwelling unit is a site plan review. So if you have a triplex already on the property and you want a duplex, you're actually into the fifth dwelling unit, so you're at special permit under our proposal. If you have two single family homes and you want a duplex, you're you're at the fourth dwelling unit, you're at site plan review. You're not at a yes with that duplex. If you have a single family home and you want to add one duplex, you're at site plan review. You're not at the yes because it's it would be three dwelling units on that property. That's what this proposal says for owner occupied. Now, if it's not owner occupied, if it's not owner occupied, you're at special permit completely. Because no matter whether it's the first duplex, the first building, the second unit on the property or above with a duplex, it's special permit once you're in duplexes under non owner occupied. But we're talking about owner occupied duplexes here, deed restricted owner occupied duplexes, where each building must be owner occupied because that's in the proposal. So you, that second building must also have an owner in one of those two units. If you put four duplex units on the property, which would be two buildings, each building must have a unit, an owner in the building, not just one of those buildings, both under this proposal, which happens to actually be different than the current bylaw. Under the current bylaw owner occupied, you could actually interpret it as only one of those buildings, only one of those four units needs an owner occupant, not two of those four. 
just one of those units. There's a lot of good about this proposal. And yes, we can nitpick it to death with all of these things. But if you're concerned about that under Chris's, the ninth and 10th duplex needing a special permit, this proposal gets you there. Turning this proposal down and not recommending it to the council, that ninth and 10th duplex on that property is a site plan review. Pat had her hand up. No, I was just gonna say one of the, um, uh, something that has been proposed by Valley CDC, which is Ball Lane, I think everybody here is in support of. And that is the creation of a series of owner-occupied duplexes. Uh, and in this instance, both sides would be owner-occupied. But there are um, restraints and um, that are when an owner is living in the same space as a renter, be they student, be they uh, um, firefighter, be they uh, formerly homeless, there's, there's restraint because you know you have your landlord right there. So I'm really confused by the opposition around this particular issue. I think the opposition is that we, that we have seen case after case come back to the ZBA saying, I bought it as a, I bought it as an owner. I'm very happy, but my job is now in San Francisco and I have to go there. And this has to be, it has to be non-owner occupied. No, there, there, it. there is such a thing as deeds restriction that would protect us. So. Christine, you've got your hand up. Yeah, um, the deed restriction is only good as long as, as the owner agrees to it. If the owner decides to take off the deed restriction and do something different with the property, then the deed restriction can go away. I didn't know that. I'm going to put my hand back up. Um, lots of compelling argument. Um, I am I am not able to support what is currently on the page today. A, it still has you know it's <laughs> inserts new stuff, old stuff, changes. If we could have a clean copy for our next discussion. And um, I will also add wording that I suggest for the triplex uh, so that that, and that has to do with footnote M because my feeling is that when we hit the third unit, anything over three units, we are now into the category of, of townhouse and apartment. And that that the fourth unit on any parcel, whether it's a townhouse apartment or a, or a second duplex or part of a triplex is the is the same consideration of of where we started and where you have recommended where the sponsors have recommended that apartments and townhouses start at that at that dwelling unit number four and dwelling unit number four has been recognized as um the in my mind the bare minimum of where special permit should start and that's why i am pushing really hard to have special permit kick in with the fourth unit because it would reflect the same as apartments it would reflect the same as townhouses and that was one of the considerations um that we went into this with. Jennifer. Yeah, I mean, also, which is getting us, <clears throat> you know, in a different place, but to consider is, you know, for those of us who live in a whole, totally different part of, it's a different Amherst than other, you know, Amherst is very different in different parts of town, but the issue of bedrooms is really almost more important than units. 
So there's, you know, currently a proposal for a property on really what's just a single, it's not a particularly large lot. And, you know, they're proposing 36 bedrooms. So if it was, it's a triplex and then two dwellings, each of which have two units. So it's three, it's seven, it's seven units, but because of the bedroom configuration, I mean, if it was seven units with 14 bedrooms would be very different than seven units with, it's not 36, it's, I, I can go through it. I think it's 24, 20, 20, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and 21 parking spaces being, you know, so that's the reality on the ground. And I would like, I would like to see, you know, in our zoning bylaw address that because I think bedrooms and number of occupants is is much should be as much a consideration as actual number of units. I know we're not going to get into that conversation now, but that's the reality on the ground for a lot of people in different neighborhoods, not all neighborhoods. Mandy. So one building with five units or four units is much different than four single family homes. Yet I hear Pam, you conflating the two and saying on a parcel four single family homes is just as problematic as one building with four units. That's, that's what I'm hearing. So I wanna, when you say anything with four units on a parcel is, is an apartment and needs apartment restrictions. Well, four single family homes is a lot different in use than a building with four units inside of it. And so I don't quite understand what you're getting at by saying no matter how, you know, once you get to four units, no matter how those four units are constructed on a property, you need special permit. But I, 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 well, well, let me finish because okay. in the BG right now, a townhouse up to 10 units is a site plan review. In the RVC, um, an apartment up to 24 units in one building is a site plan review. Not four units, 24. You can build a 24 unit apartment building under site plan review right now in the RVC. That's what our zoning says. And so it's not always about the number of units per se. It's not always about how those units are constructed because four units to me in one building is a completely different type of building than four single family homes, or even than two duplexes. They're just different. They're different uses, they're different looks, they're different everything. And so I don't think we should be equating two duplexes, two buildings, each of which is a duplex on a unit with needing the same type of permit automatically in a, in a zone as a, an apartment because it's got four units and an apartment is four units or more because they're different. The size of the buildings are different. The types of um, sewer and, and utilities that are needed are different. We're looking at a two family or a one family building. Just because there's two on a parcel doesn't mean it equates to an apartment complex. And so I don't quite understand where you're coming from from that and saying, well, once you're at four units, you're in an apartment complex, even if it's two buildings. I just don't, I, I'm struggling with understanding that. I'm talking about the, the um, when town meeting passed the definition of an apartment or a townhouse, it started with anything with three units or more. For whatever reason, the, the complications, the, the amount of parking, the orientation on the site becomes more complicated after that third unit. That's that's what that's what the modules looked at. When I think of the various combinations that are possible and the fact that because we are really only making market rate housing in Amherst today and that market rate housing is primarily going to four students at a minimum because they're all bringing in their go, we all went to the seminar, they're all bringing in their ghost, their ghost friends. Um, we're talking lots and lots of people on small properties. 
Jennifer just gave a very good example of, I don't even know the size of that parcel, but it is it is not an over large parcel. Um, if if we were to um, if we were to implement footnote M, so the interesting thing is the two uh, four units are being built in addition to a triplex. Four units would have would have automatically been. I mean, it is going to it is going to the ZBA. It is going through special permit review, um, which is which is the saving grace, right? Um, but the complexity goes up after the third unit. That's why I am focusing on that. Whatever configuration, whether it's a you know story and a half or a two story house, a townhouse is a story and a half or two story house too. So we're really just talking about the number of of dwelling, the number of occupants, the complexity of the site. That's why. So I I need to just see I need to see how triplex plays out, and um, and how we and how we protect the. Uh, um the density on a parcel because that's that's what impacts everything mandy and then we need to look at the time because it's now almost six o'clock so that site at 98 fearing is 0.85 acres a tenth of an acre larger than my house just just to give people than larger than my more than a tenth of an acre larger than my lot in Amherst Woods. Just just to give people an idea of what you're saying is not overly large. It's larger than my plot of okay. land. Can I say something? I have to say yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Jennifer. That's the point. You have a single family living, they want to have 24 people living on a space that's only one tenth bigger than where your family lives. The idea that we don't think that's enough and we need more is absurd. I mean, it's just not, that is a lot of people to be living on a lot that size. And it's, they're narrow lots. So they, the houses around them are much closer to that property than when your neighbors are to you. Yeah. It's just not okay to, <laughs> And, and, you know, to to ask people that live in a much denser place than your neighborhood will ever be zoned for to accept greater density and that they're it's problematic if they won't. It's just um, that's extremely it seems inherently problematic. But I think you said it all by saying they want to have 24 different people and 21 space parking lot in on a space that's not very much bigger than when you're where your single family lives and where only single family live on your block and in your neighborhood. So we have we have some options. We could take a vote right we could make a motion right now and we could take a vote. Um, I am I am feeling a split jury here. Um, and I don't know that you know I I'm happy to make a motion. I I am personally not willing to go item by item and break it down into into the pieces at this time. I need to see everything that I've been talking about in terms of um, triplexes and the um, and footnote M in place before I agree to anything. Um, and would. If, if I if I if I couldn't move forward on that, I would I would probably want to second the planning board's recommendation that we not recommend to town council. So we can either spend another hour going back and forth. Um, it doesn't sound like we will get very far, um, and I'm not sure what would break the stalemate. It will be a split vote. Mandy, thoughts? Um, I actually wanted to respond to Jennifer. So the point of zoning, 
and having different zones is to pick different densities for different areas. And I guess one thing I'm feeling from a lot of the comments made is that there's a resentment that part of our town is zoned low density and that that low density stays low density and that part of our town is zoned at a higher density and that it's being turned into a higher density because it's zoned that way. That's what zoning has done with our dimensional tables, with our, you know, the dimensional table that has a minimum lot size. The minimum lot size where I live by zone in Amherst Woods is um, point uh, is 30,000 square feet, almost three quarters of an acre. My, my plot of land is barely the minimum zone. That's what the town by zoning has chosen. And to continue to say, well, you don't want density in your area. Well, sure, I would say make a proposal to change the RO zone to higher density and see what goes. You know what? We tried that with this proposal. And you know what the planning board said? You can't do that, that's too dense. But in the RG, the minimum lot size is 12,000 square feet, nearly a two thirds less than ours. To then say, well, it's already too dense is to ignore that's what this town has chosen as density. That's what they've done to say those 25 units is too dense. They meet the dimensional table that this town has chosen for the density for that area for that lot size. You could split that 0.85 acre lot into three different lots and have a lot less density if the person chose to, to subdivide it into three separate lots if it met the rest of the dimensional table requirements. Unfortunately, it probably wouldn't because as you say, it's long and narrow, right? And we also have minimum frontage requirements that it wouldn't meet if you tried to split it into three lots. But that's what zoning does. And to then say, when our master plan, along with the zoning, has said density in the downtown and village centers and outlying areas less dense, and then to condemn the outlying areas for being less dense, I just don't understand it. Because this is, you know, that 24 units, or it's not even 24 units, you're saying it's 24 beds, that seven units is below the density that our zoning bylaw allows in the area per acre. We're not trying to increase the density per acre. We haven't touched the dimensional table at all, other than what you say with the triplex. But the proposal you have has one triplex and the rest are duplexes. And I don't think Pat or I has said anything about the potential problem with adding triplexes into footnote M. That's a great thing you guys pointed out that maybe we hadn't seen. We haven't said you can't do that. And then that wouldn't change the density allowed at all. I guess I just don't understand the hatred for the outlying areas for not being dense. And then, I have to, saying, you have to let me talk. and then saying your single family home can't have anything else. Well, we proposed more stuff. And Mandy. then everyone said, don't. <laughs> Thank you, Mandy. You keep putting words in my mouth. I am not, I, I am don't do not want to see you where I'm not never, I'm the one who said I think our current zoning is when we have we have the ADUs are allowed all over town. So we've allowed for more. I have never criticized your zoning, but you have repeatedly said where I live should be denser. You advocated for lifting footnote M for a long time. And when I have I've mentioned I'm not asking for my where I live to be less dense. I chose to live here. I don't want it to be more dense. And you have con you have many times pushed back when I have said I don't want to see it, you know that that in the RG we shouldn't have greater density. You you this is the first time this meeting that you haven't pushed back against that. I have never advocated changing the zoning anywhere in town or where you live, but when you say that single family housing, that neighborhoods designed for single family housing are discriminatory. Well, I don't live in that kind of a neighborhood. And I've never said that, you know, I've never accused, said that to anybody who lives there, but you, so that's, so you're just, you're, I, I don't like to have words put in my mouth. I'm not asking for my neighborhood to become less dense. I'm just saying, I don't want to see it zoned for greater density. And you have 
stated in many meetings that you think that my neighborhood, that the RG neighborhood should be denser. The last one couple of meetings ago, you said, because it was downtown, we're not downtown. There's the general residence, then there's limited business, then there's the general business district. So, you know, I just, I, I have, my concern is when someone who, when you say that, you know, again, that, you know, 24 units, but it's a whole tenth larger than yours. I'm saying it's dense enough. I just don't want greater density. I've never asked anybody to rezone to make the RG di districts less dense, but um, I don't want to be told I'm I um, am averse to change when where I live has the change that these zoning bylaws are proposing, but in greater density in those districts. So I was just going to add that that um, if I go out my front door, I can go 30 paces to the right and I'm in front of somebody else's front door and I can go 30 paces to the left and I'm in front of somebody else's front door. And we all understand that that ADUs could be built. Uh, they I could build one in my little bar, historic barn out in back of my house. Um, but we need to we need to be able in the residential general residential district to be able to say enough is enough at some point, and that is no more than the nine or ten units per acre that footnote M protects, and that's what it allows. It allows a Tanbrook apartment, it allows Spruce Ridge apartment complex or you know hometown uh, complex. It is, you know, it's possible. It's possible in um, on main streets, but again, there are lots of streets in the RG that that are are back roads, and they are. Um, what we're saying is, special permit is not an onerous thing in in dealing with density in close close proximity to other people. So again, we have we have come to the end of another hour, and um, if I were to take a straw straw poll on on how to proceed, it would probably be a split vote. Um, if there is a suggestion that we continue conversation, we have not we will not be continuing the public hearing but we would continue the conversation on this to our next meeting or to the next appropriate meeting, at which time we have some of the safeguards in place that um, include, include adding triplex to footnote M. Um, is there any other suggestions beyond that? I'm looking at Pat. He doesn't know it, but I am. Pat's muted. I'm looking back at you. <laughs> Andy. So I have a practical question. I know we're missing a fifth member. So if we vote an entire proposal today, it's going to be a 2-2 lock. Yep. So it'll just be tied. Um, but my practical question is, I've heard from both Pam and Jennifer that they don't want to split the proposal into multiple recommendations. But if we wait till next time um, and potentially move the meeting so we have five members instead of four, although I don't know because Shalini's still not here to determine and I know I have to, to make the meeting, I can't have it on the sixth. But if we were to split this into potential things, um, and I, I, we haven't spent a lot of time talking about some of the other part, portions of the proposal, are Pam and Jennifer up for potentially actually voting yes to recommend certain parts of this proposal, particularly the triplex with the addition of footnote M, converted dwellings, subdividable dwellings, townhouses, um, and 
portions of duplexes. I, 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 I don't know. But um, my question is, is it worth waiting or should we just make the vote now and send a split vote to the council? Or might some parts get recommended if Pam and Jennifer are willing to vote yes to certain parts of it, even though they've said they don't want to split the motions at all? Jennifer. We, um, Pam, you had requested a little while ago in the meeting, you know, having everything written out if there's any changes been made. I mean, I, I just actually saw this today, about an hour before the meeting, the motion sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Too. So I would need a little more time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would feel very uncomfortable as it is to be able to accept one chunk at a time, just because I think there are some that are linked, as I said before, and um, so I'm, I, I am not ready to, to chunk it into pieces yet. And I understand if we wait for a colony, there's much greater likelihood that it would be a three, two vote in support of all of these changes. Andy. I'll let Pat go first. No, Pat. you go ahead, honey. I was just gonna make a motion then, but I don't know what you're thinking, Pat. Go ahead. I have a feeling it's the same thing. I move that the town council, uh, I move to recommend the town council adopt the um, proposed revisions as presented in the document titled duplex and townhome proposed bylaw revision 12A-2023-06-21. Um, as modified by adding to table three dimensional table regulations footnote M, the phrase uh, three uh, triplexes paren section 3.3213 after um, the reference to townhouses in footnote M. Second. Would you mind reading the um, motion once more so I make sure I get it down? I will do my best. Um, I move to recommend the town council adopt um, the proposed revisions as presented in the document titled Duplex and Townhome Proposed Bylaw Revision 12A-2023-06-21. And modified by revising Table 3 Dimensional Regulations Footnote M to add the phrase triplex parens Three point section three point three two one three and parens after the reference to townhouses. It should actually come before townhouses. Do you want it before before the reference to townhouses? The number the number comes. If, if you want the numbers in number order, <laughs> so before townhouses, Kelly. <laughs> My apologies. Um, I got a little bit lost. Um, could you read just the part after by revising table? Yep. Hold on. Um, by revising table three, dimensional regulations footnote M. Um, to yep. add the phrase triplex parens 3.321, section 3.3213 and parens um, before the reference to townhouses. Excellent. Thank you. I got it. Thank you, Kelly. You are welcome.
is there a second? I already seconded it. Okay, I missed that. <laughs> uh, let's take a vote. Pat. Aye. Mandy. Aye. Pam is a no because there are still other elements that are in the rest of the document that refer back to triplexes and this element. Um, and, I, and I'm not clear that they're all settled. So at this point, I have to say no. Jennifer. Uh, no, I, I would need to go through everything again. But I like the way that went because I think that's what is needed. And I'm, I'm guessing that um, this isn't the end of the conversation, <laughs> just because it's a stalled vote. Um, if it were, if it were a three-two vote in favor of it, or if it were three-two and not in favor of it, we would say that was our, that was our recommendation to town council uh, with this one modification. But um, sadly. To spend more time on this, um, it looks like we need clean copies of this. Yeah, Pat. Yeah, I'm not. Go ahead, Jennifer. No, no, no Pat first, and then Jennifer. Ah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't see why it doesn't come to the council with the split vote of the four members who are present. I think that's honest and that's direct. And I'm not trying to manipulate the vote one way or the other, nor are you. And um, particularly since you know it would go against you. Um, so having Chalonet here doesn't change what this vote is really about. And we've made it. And this recommendation should go to the council. And the full council will deal with it. Um, I think anything else is, you know, if we council passes it, great. If council doesn't pass it, great. But it sounds like you and other people have work to do on these issues that you'll carry on, hopefully, and do, uh, whether it passes or it doesn't pass. So I think we should move forward. Jennifer? Um, could we still get a copy of the most recent um, proposed yeah. changes? Like yeah. I feel, I really didn't understand what Pat said at the beginning. I misunderstood that. So that's where I don't totally, what you said last night about it in the aquifer, I heard it in the, so that's why I'd like to maybe see it in writing because I think it's. So, so. Revision 12A is is the most recent. The only change that would be made would be remove the comment that we're willing to remove it because it didn't seem to that that one section for removal um, didn't seem to go anywhere. So it's not proposed for removal anymore. I'd remove that comment and I'd remove all the highlights and there would be nothing else changed. The highlights were simply to highlight what changed between versions. That's the only thing, you know, so that that was that was so you could track different versions. Um, but I can produce a new revision that that doesn't have those highlights, um, a, new, a new document that doesn't have the highlights, but that's the only difference from what is 12A in the packet today. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I wouldn't mind making a motion and having it voted on to any um, final wording include the motion that was just, uh, or the, the um, text that was just made and that anything that goes to town council as a final product has the words that we heard just recently. So I would make a motion that we vote on that right now to accept or not accept that clause that was changed. Um, is there a second? So to attempt to avoid a motion, I will create a new draft that says 13A that adds that language in. Okay. That's okay with everyone. 
even though it was a split vote. And I will keep that draft language as a separate highlight in a different color. <laughs> and then you also take the um, triplex and a part, no, triplex and townhouse from the aquifer. It's not in the aquifer. That's the current draft. Right. So Pat's changed. Oh, you were just saying you were going. No. Pat, mate, can you just explain to me? Because I'm sorry to be confused. Pat, what you said at the beginning of the planning board meeting last night. I don't remember specifically what I said. I'm not going to repeat it now. It was clarified that it was not, uh, about. Right, so it's, I guess I'm just saying it's in the draft now. Yes, right here. Oh, is okay, the that's draft draft okay. That says no. In <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. I didn't understand if Pat was just proposing that to the planning board, but it's already in the draft. Okay. It's in the draft. Got it. Right here. That's why Got they're it. highlighting. Okay. That's why it's valuable, even if it's color coded and crazy to spend time on it and it was available, so. So. Yeah, I didn't go through the planning board packet before I turned into the meeting. Yeah, it's in this packet too. Yeah, I no, but I just, I just missed well, it. Well, you need no, to- I'm not blaming you, I'm just saying I misheard you, but you're right, you're right. I should have, I didn't realize it was already in the packet, okay. Okay, so I will create that. Um, I would say with next steps, it goes off to, as chair, I would send this off to GOL for clarity, consistency, actionability, and, and legal review. I think it's kind of had a legal review. I'm not sure. Um, but it will go for full legal review, including determination as to voting quantums. Um, and it will go to the council with the split tied vote on recommending or not recommending with one absent. Uh, that does not necessarily stop this committee, given that there's timings from discussing potentially further recommendations, if counselor, if committee members would like to discuss potentially further recommendations, I urge them to get in touch with me on whether to put it on future agendas. Um, but but with that vote on a recommendation or frankly a non recommendation, it's not it's neither yes or no on the recommendation. Um, I will consider most of this work done um, unless I hear from any member that wants to add this to an agenda for a specific particular discussion. Chris has her hand up. Chris. Yeah, I know that. I was waiting for me. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Pam, you're still chairing. <laughs> I mean, Christine. So I just wanted to confirm that the planning department has not discussed this draft with, with it, or any draft of this proposal okay. with KP Law. We haven't sent it to them and we haven't discussed it with them. Thank you. So that'll be GOL's job. <laughs> There's the chair, yeah. GOL, thrilled to hear that. <laughs> Mandy, before we turn over the meeting yep. to step in the in the five minutes we have left, um, the the earliest that this, given that it's going to GOL, given that it's um, probably going to get KP Law Review, what is the time frame for this to come to council? Um, I can't answer that right now. I have to do my 90 day limits on how late things can go. I will create that timeline, send it off to the president um, and the GOL chair, and I can send it off to this committee too, so that they have an idea. Um, I, I don't, there's, there's time limit to, limits to vote at council. Um, I haven't calculated them. I don't calculate that until the hearing is closed. And now that the hearing is closed and the planning board hearing is closed, those can be calculated. Um, but I haven't done that yet. So I will send that calculation um, off to the committee just so they know, as well as the GOL chair, which happens to also be someone on this committee, as well as um, the president of the council for agenda setting purposes. Thank you. I'm turning over the meeting to Mandy Jo Haneke. Thank you. Um, seeing the time, we will not be doing residential bylaw review today. I apologize, John, if you've been here the whole time um, for that. Uh, that will be next meeting pretty much the whole time. General public comment. We're going to open up general public comment right now to um, anyone uh, to make a public comment on matters within the jurisdiction of CRC. Residents are welcome to express their views up to three minutes. Um, if you would like to make a public comment right now, please raise your hand.
Seeing no hands raised, public comment is now closed. Um, with that, we have the minutes. Um, are there any requested changes to the June 8th, June 12th, or June 15th meeting minutes? I think they they might not have all been in the packet, actually. Um, in fact, none of them might have been in the packet. Jennifer, is that what you're saying? No, I did have, um, I think for the uh, June 15th minutes, I did have a request for a, a you know a little change I wanted to request. Sure. Okay, so I think if I read it correctly, it said that um, Pam had suggested that um, the two members of the two associate members of the ZBA, Sarah Marshall and David Sloviter, be advanced to the two three year terms. And then I think later on it said that I suggested um, might have been Mr. Henry and Mr. Sloviter, but I did concur with Pam's recommendation. So I just wanted it there that my first choice was for the two associates to advance to full-time and then the new applicants to be associates. So I, I didn't want it to appear that I opposed the two current associates advancing to full-time. Okay, um, Pam, are you able to make that change or get the gist of that change for that change? Yeah. And that was in the June 15th minutes. Any other changes? Seeing none, I'm going to make a motion to adopt the June 8th, 2023 meeting minutes as presented, the June 12th, 2023 special meeting minutes as presented, and the June 15th, 2023 special meeting minutes as amended. Is there a second? Second. Pam Rooney seconds. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll vote. Uh, Jennifer? Yes. Pam? Yes. Mandy's an aye, Pat. Aye. That is four to zero, unanimous with one absent. Um, I don't have announcements. We were going to talk in next agenda preview about the next meeting. I cannot make the meeting scheduled for the sixth. Um, we were hoping to have Shalini here to discuss whether we should move it or not. Um, I, I don't have a, I, I can make the next week. So if we move it, I know I can make it on the 13th. Um, but I, I don't have a preference one way or the other. If people want to go forward with the sixth instead of the 13th, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure there was a quorum for the sixth. If Pam doesn't want to run a meeting, <laughs> we can move it to the 13th. <laughs> um, Jennifer. So I, I, I'm sorry, I had to miss the GOL meeting this week, but I thought um, in GOL they agreed it'd be nice to give staff July 4th. So I, I, I'd be happy to move it to the 13th for that reason. I could go with that. Pat? Yeah, I think it's unanimous. We'll move that meeting to July 13th. It will be on rental registration. John, I, I know John's already gone. Um, <laughs> it will be on rental him. registration. Pam and I, were, the whole, I, I think the whole thing. Um, yeah. Uh, unless, as I said, I hear from any member that wants to continue discussion on the zoning bylaws that, that has the neutral recommendation, basically, with a tied split vote um, to potentially change that recommendation. But um, I'm going to forward that off. But if I hear, I will add some of that on. But the goal is rental registration. Um, Pam and I did receive from Paul today or yesterday late. I haven't looked at it. Um, KP law review of the regulate draft regulations. Um, so that was not on today's agenda because I didn't expect to get that KP law today, even if we got to stuff. So we'll have that to review next meeting along with the final um, revisions that were made based on the, a cleaner copy based on KP laws, the review that we did last time of the KP law stuff for the bylaw um, and a better Hello? draft of um, the fees. Oh, I'm in the meeting. Pam. Carol Marsh is here. Hold on. <laughs> Can you mute I got it. Got it. Um, we muted you, Pat. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, can, I have not looked at the KP Law Review either, but can that be put in the in the next packet ASAP so people have some actual time to read it? 
Yeah, I, I will create that packet on SharePoint tomorrow. Um, sometime tomorrow, I'll create it instead of tonight. Um, but um, you have it. I think Paul asked us whether we should send it to the whole council. He sent the, the initial review to the whole council. So I'll have him just send this one out to the whole council too, even if it's not in the packet. Um, all the other documents are in today's packet other than that KP law review because I had that on the agenda. Um, Chris, are you asking to get a copy of it too? No, I wanted to go back to the issue of um, what CRC recommended for Planning Board mm -hmm. and Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, and the question is, is Town Council going to make appointments on Monday? The votes are on the agenda for Monday. Thank you. So I, I will make sure the regulation KP law review gets out somehow. Um, I will try to create the full packet tomorrow. I don't think Athena will get it posted online though um, until sometime next week. We know the agenda so I can send the agenda out for the 13th and get it up. Um, but it, it might take Athena a couple days to actually post it on the website, but I'll, I'll put it in SharePoint. And at this point, the meeting to discuss it is on the 13th of July. Yes. So that gives us some time to read it. Gives us a lot of time. Okay. Any other requests for the next agenda? Any items not anticipated 48 hours in advance? Any other problems with me just adjourning the meeting? I thank Chris for staying and listening and for her report on the planning board's actions last night and through all of this. Um, I thank Dave for being here. He was quiet the whole time, but thank you for sitting and, and being here, Dave. Um, we will see you, but well, we might not see Chris at the next meeting. She doesn't really do the rental reg, so uh, it might be a little bit till we see Chris. Um, but I'm thank sure you you'll miss us. <laughs> um, Take we'll care, everyone. Yep. Thank you. We're adjourned at 634. Thank you, Kelly. Bye.